We are a cool 134 degrees in this car right now. There's a small part of me that wants to try to make it for 30 minutes. So you might be asking yourself, why I would be sitting in my car in 100 plus degree weather in the middle of a scorching Texas summer? Well, we want to share with you the concept of thermal expansion, what it is, how it works, and more importantly, how understanding it can make you a better machinist. And make sure you stick around to the end because we're going to show you how modern inspection equipment can help you tackle this problem automatically. Now he the chief architect of thermal expansion can obviously be a great thing, right? We all love a nice warm fire coming in from a day in the snow. Uh, saunas can be extremely beneficial for your health. Let's face it, water slides in the sun, great. In the snow, not so much. And let's be real, Texas brisket needs a lot of heat to make that happen. In manufacturing though, heat can be kind of a mixed bag. Obviously there are beneficial applications, for example, like heat treat. We've been doing this for thousands of years using extreme amounts of heat to bring out desired metallurgical properties. There's obviously welding, right, that uses extreme heat to create essentially the modern world with the structures you see. And in this very shop, we've shown you how we use heat to actually hold tools in an extremely efficient and useful manner. Now in all these cases, whether we're talking about metal and CNC machine parts, or even something like this breakfast sandwich here, each one of these items, when they experience heat, go through thermal expansion. Now, what is thermal expansion? Thermal expansion is the tendency for all objects to expand in size, area, and volume when they heat up. And that happens because the atoms and molecules in a part, say something like this here, become more excited with heat and begin to move around. So imagine we have a room with 100 people in it and it's freezing, so everybody's standing perfectly still. Now imagine that as the room gets hotter, these people start to move around, right? They start to get active. Well, they can't occupy the same space as each other. So as these 100 people begin to move around, the area that they occupy becomes bigger. That's thermal expansion. So why should we as manufacturers care about any of this? Well, obviously our job as machinists or even as inspectors is to make sure that parts meet print. And in fact, if you look, a lot of your prints are gonna refer to an ASMEY 14.5. There's a couple different versions out there, 1994, 2009, 2018. But all of those standards, along with their sort of sister uh, companions in the ISO field, require parts to be inspected at 60 degrees Fahrenheit. That means that it doesn't matter if it's 92 degrees out there, if it's 40 degrees out there in the winter time, when your part gets inspected, it has to meet spec tolerance, gd &T, all that has to hold in this controlled environment at 68 degrees. All right, now in order to give you a really good example of how this thermal expansion can work, we have a polycarbonate part right here that we're gonna use as an example. Now, the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and measure this. This is pretty close to the temperature that you would find in an inspection lab. We're about 72 degrees out here. That's gonna be a little warmer than the 68, but not so big to make a huge difference. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some Deltronics pins to first measure these two holes right here. Now the Deltronics pins allow us to pretty accurately measure the size of the hole because they increase or they differ from one another by only a 10th of a thou. Now these holes are tolerance at 0 0.8750 to 0 0.876, so we have a thou of tolerance. We're gonna use our Deltronics pins to find out roughly where they're at. Here is our nominal pin for this Deltronic set, which is 0 0.8750. All right, it does slide in there. It's got a little bit, a little bit of play. So that would be my bottom of my tolerance. Now I'm actually gonna take the top of my tolerance pin right here. This is the 0.876. And there is no way that this pin is gonna go in there. All right, so let's go make this uh, part and our camera guy sweat. So what better way to heat up a part than to sit in a car in the middle of the Texas heat? And as you can see, it's 108 degrees with some drizzle, a perfect Texas summer day. So this is a Michigan, sorry Donnie, let's get to it. It's hot, it's not sunny, but it's hot. All right, so we're gonna stick our part right here. We figure, what, 30 minutes and this car should do it. We got a snazzy heat gun, so no big deal. We are a cool 134 degrees in this car right now, so it's uh, nice and hot. 
Man, it's warm. I can feel it in my lungs. Can you feel it? It's hot. I don't think we're gonna sit in here for 30 minutes. Oh, oh bro, look at my car. It's all sweaty, dude. Oh, wow. Gross. <laughs> all right, so obviously, I think it's probably, no matter what, probably unsafe to sit in here with this part for 30 minutes. So we're gonna get out of this car and we're gonna come back in about 25 minutes to grab our part. Cause otherwise I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure we won't make it. So, all right, you wanna get out? Feels warm, it's warm to the touch. All right, so if you remember before, this was the 8750 pin. And as you can see now, that drops all the way to the bottom. Easy, easy. Now we'll take this all the way up to an 876. So once we get it lined up, you can see it drops right in almost just like the 875. Now this pin wouldn't even start before we put it in the car. All right, now a common misconception is that thermal expansion will cause holes to shrink. Now that's because we measure a hole in a diameter and we assume that if all this material is growing around it, that it will push and shrink that diameter. But that's not actually true because what really defines a hole is this circumference going around it. So each point of this circumference expands out and that's why we get a bigger hole. So we can see that the hole has obviously gotten bigger but what do we do about it? You can take them into a climate controlled environment and inspection and let it sit, but that can take hours. Sometimes you might have to wait overnight. Now, another thing you can do is you can actually do the math. And in order to do that, you're gonna have to understand the equation that represents the thermal expansion, which is shown here. You read this as delta L equals alpha times L zero or L naught times delta T. Breaking down those variables real quick, delta L describes a change in length, that is how much the dimension has moved. You have the next variable alpha, which is the coefficient of thermal expansion, otherwise known as CTE. These values are sometimes small if you have a material that does not expand much, like glass or several pure metals, and it will be a higher value for materials that do expand a lot, like, for example, the plastics we're looking at today. The L naught stands for the original length or the length that the measurement was at before any temperature change occurred. And then we have delta T, which is similar to delta L, except this time we're talking about a change in temperature. Now this can be a little intimidating, but don't worry, we're gonna walk you through it. So for our example, let's consider that we have an uh, aluminum part, a pretty big one with a five inch diameter hole in the center, and our tolerance is plus two minus zero, bringing our ideal diameter that we wanna hit to 5.001. Now let's say further that we've been hitting that, but we're also in a warm shop. It's about about 90 degrees, the material has been sitting out in the shop for a while. It's a big operation on the part, so we're coming out when we're all done at 5.001 at 90 degrees. Let's go ahead, plug in our numbers, and see what it comes out to after it cools down in inspection. Now, delta L is what we're looking for, so that's the unknown, but we do know our coefficient of thermal expansion. Again, our CTE is 13 times 10 to the negative six, which is just a fancy way of saying 0 0.000013. We know that our original length is 5.001, and our final variable is our delta T, or change in temperature, and this will be at negative 22, which reflects the drop from the shop floor temperature of 90 degrees to the inspection temperature of 68 degrees. So now it's just a matter of easy calculation and doing the math, we come up with negative 0.00143. That is our change in length. So if we subtract that from the 5.001 we're measuring, you can see we now have an out of spec part coming in at 4.99957, which is almost half a thou out of spec. So as you can see, there's a little bit of work there, right? We have to find the numbers, do all the calculations, but it can be done. But we don't always have time for that either, right? So what else can we do? Well, with that, we're gonna show you how modern CMMs like our Mitsutoyo MyStar right here can take the guesswork out of it and can help you get back to doing what makes you money and that's machining parts. Okay, so we have our parts set up. Now there's a couple things that you're gonna wanna do. First, we have to let the machine know what temperature the part is. So we do have a couple sensors right here. We're gonna put them up in a location that's not gonna interfere with our probe measurement, and that's gonna let the machine know where the temperature is. It's currently at 82.05 degrees. I'll watch that, and when it starts to slow down or get to its peak temperature, that's when I'll pull my measurement. If you're in a machine shop, there's no HVAC control, you've been running parts all day, that coolant it's getting real hot. This thing's been in there for you know a 35 minute operation, whatever it might be. 
this might represent something that you might find in a shop where you've machined these holes, we have a tolerance, one thousandths, where is it at? But more importantly, where's it gonna end up? That's what we're gonna check right now. So as you can see, if we use this thermal camera, there's our part glowing nice and hot at around 89 degrees, according to our little thermal attachment here. All right, so we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna run this program. I'm gonna run it once with the thermal compensation turned off, so to see what it would measure just all on its own. And then I'm gonna go ahead and turn the thermal compensation on and we'll see what it measures then. The thermal compensation on the CMM is doing exactly what it's supposed to do. That first set of measurements it took with the thermal compensation turned off and it says we have bad parts. It says our parts are above tolerance at 0.876 and some change. Now as a machinist, if I took those values as that's where the part is or that's where the part's gonna be, I would go back to my machine and comp it. The problem is when you use a thermal compensation, you can see our parts are exactly where they're supposed to be. So that comp would actually take them out of spec when they were in final inspection. So we didn't have any blood, we didn't have any tears, but we sure did have a lot of sweat for you. Now I will say, out of all the different ways we've shown you to handle thermal expansion, the CMM with the compensation built in the software, that's gonna be the best, most efficient way for you going forward. We hope you liked the video, so before you go, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, make sure you have notifications, and if you wanna support some free education, check out our store, or maybe look at becoming a YouTube member. We'll see y'all next time. And just you ready to ride on these fools? Oh my god, it's hot in here, bro. Get the AC on in this, bro. <laughs> and, and just look how sweaty. Are you? Did, are you, did you guys actually like hop in the shower? Is this real, bro? It's totally real. We've been in here for like 15 minutes, <laughs> dude. You're dumb. <laughs>